Hey there viewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That's a 2014 Cadillac. It's a CTS4 with a big 2 turbo. And uh, the lady said the engine light's on and has been having problems with it coming on, but I started up and drove it in and the light wasn't on. Now, I drove it in last night before I went home. However, I did notice it has an obvious misfire. But from the seat of my pants, it wasn't your typical ignition misfire. It's more like a low cylinder contribution. Not a straight up fish bite, but we got a cylinder that's not working right. Took it for a little rip around town. Uh, driving it, you wouldn't really know. So that tells me, you know, again, more or less low contribution. Probably low compression is my is my guess. Uh, brought it back here, let it idle, and boom, 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 you feel it. Now the big problem is, I cranked it over and I can hear it. So we're we're more than likely dealing with uh, low compression from some reason, you know, something piston valve train, something like that. So I could be wrong, but let's uh, look into it, see if we can figure out the cause, and then see what the the cure will be for this lady. I've got it going through a full system scan over there. She's got the DVT direct injection. It states. Don't know much about this car, it's not a regular customer. 111,000 miles on it. Um, all right, well, let's see what our scan shows, see what cylinder it is. That's not bad, only eight codes, lots of modules. Now let's go to report. Let's see what the report says. I'm assuming misfire code. Oh, okay. Uh, we got a Hego with a slow response, not requested. Not, so none of these are turning the light on. Misfire detected, that's all it tells us. It didn't uh, seem to me, which I was surprised. Yesterday I had it idling for, let's say a minute, foot on the brake in gear, and that, that stinking light never came on, which I'm surprised because it was an obvious single cylinder misfire. So uh, cold start rough idle. Um, okay. Invalid data received from engine controller, so must be the light definitely was on. It turned on her ABS light because she said she had a lot of lights on uh, when the engine light would come on. So yeah, and then invalid data received from parts or from ABS. A couple of transponders. Okay, let's go. We'll just go right into the engine. That's going to be the smartest thing to do. And then we'll go live data. I haven't started it yet this morning, so she'll be a cold start. Do a cold start video. Those are popular. We'll go with the misfire. All right, let's see. We can go miss history. Oops. One, two, three, four. Cylinder one looks like it's our culprit based off the history. And that's what we'll, we'll look at today when we fire it up. Yeah, I was really shocked yesterday that, that light did not come on. So yeah, coolant temps at almost 60, furnace has been blowing on it, so intake air temp is up a little. Okay, let's just make sure that cylinder one is, is the one that's uh, suspect here. Couldn't hear when it started there. Yeah, we see right away. I'll put it in gear. You guys probably can't hear it, but I can feel it. So, okay, cylinder one, misfiring. Feels pretty bad right now, worse than it did yesterday, actually. Well, let me show you something here. We're gonna shut off before it gets too warmed up. So, let's see, we're gonna put it in clear flood. So, foot on the brake, pedal to the plastic. Now, listen to the cadence of this engine. What's that tell you? That ain't good, boys. That ain't good. So that's where we're at. Computer's telling us number one cylinder. It's typically, usually, majority of the time, high 90 percentile is correct on which cylinder. Hopefully it makes sense to you just cranking that over. I don't really see a need to do a relative compression test when it's super obvious when we can hear one cylinder that's not contributing as much as the others. Um, if it doesn't make sense to you, think about this, you know, when you crank your engine over, and let's say it's not starting or it's in clear flood mode, it should have a very even cadence to its cranking, you know. Dut, 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 dut. So that noise you hear is, you know, when each cylinder comes up on compression, the starter strains a little bit. 
when you heard this one crank it's dit, 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 dit. you know it, you could hear it you know skip right past that cylinder or you could hear the starter not strain as much so i'm going to assume it's a number one cylinder we're going to double check let's pull this engine cover off um that now i will tell you you can be this this can get you because you can have a cylinder that's washed out with gasoline that really drops low in compression that will give you a, the sound of a of a low compression cylinder when it, it technically can be washed out just from gasoline so keep that in mind doesn't happen that often i've seen it i've heard it and, and you know it can happen so keep that in mind let's so get this engine cover off we did a video putting an engine in a Cadillac CTS. It was a non-turbo. I think it was the 2.5. Uh-oh. It's got the new coil. <laughs> oh, boy. Somebody's already been getting after it, then. That tells us that. So, guy didn't mention anything about having it at another shop or anything. I do see somebody's giving it the uh, rubber hose special here on part of the uh, PCV system. So yeah, new ignition coil, probably a new spark plug. So this is the typical, typical shenanigans that we see before before we get them. Um, anyhow, let's keep going. We'll uh, we'll go old school. We'll just start with a uh, compression test right here on cylinder one, and then we'll just do a leak down test. Um, the cylinder is easy to get to. All of them are actually on this car. There's multiple, multiple ways a fella could go about this. This is the way that I'm choosing. Let me look in that hole. We gotta make sure there's nothing sitting down in there. Nope. And then let's pull that plug out. The Astro magnetic spark plug socket set. There it is. See the four piece here. Oh my gosh. Oh, they smell so awful. We had that Ford Fusion. We did the ECM and the ignition coils in, all the coils exploded. It was terrible. This whole socket set still stinks. That is probably the worst smell. A blowed up ignition coil. They smell so bad. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Ugh. She's covered with oil. All right, and that's from a leaking uh, spark plug tube seal. Yep, Ugh, I can't get past that smell. Uh, beyond that, there was a little bit of oil down in there. I guess I didn't uh, tell you guys about that before I pulled it out. I was looking more for like debris, but uh, spark plug's black. Doesn't look soaked on the electrode, you know, like it's soaked with gasoline or anything. Just the oil that got on it when we uh, pulled that out. All right, let's um, let's throw a compression gauge in there, wheel it over, see what we have. Make sure your check valve in there is good, or your Schrader valve. Modern engine like this, I would expect you know 100 and 170 plus cranking compression on about the third puff. Definitely, definitely above 150. Most most modern engines are. 170 180 so we'll set that there i'm gonna hop in it crank it see what we have okay. what we got boys Ooh, we got about 50 psi so uh scan data was correct it definitely is number one cylinder 50 psi dead too low uh, even if your rings were washed out with gasoline, it wouldn't be that low. What I've seen in the range, let's say it has a 170 PSI normal, completely washed out with gasoline, you know, there's still 100, 120, you know, somewhere is there. Usually you just get the car fired up, you know, clear the flood out of that cylinder, get the car fired up, give it the rev up tune up, and you know, they'll usually straighten themselves out. This one has an obvious problem. What we're gonna do now, because the crank's super easy to get to, let me make sure I got the key turned off. 
it's always good to double check. I'm gonna do the old piston on the screwdriver on the piston trick. I want to get that baby all the way to the bottom. Let me grab a 24 and turn this crank. Or maybe I'll grab a 27. Nope, that's a 27. That's a 24. Should have went with my gut. Get her piston all the way to the bottom. There she is. She's all the way to the bottom. Now we can see better. So there was about 11 service bolts that I found on GM when I brought this thing in. And I was looking, I figured, well, let's have my little gander, see if GM knows about a problem. Apparently they do. There's, like I say, there was 11 service bolt ins for cylinder misfires. One of them caught my attention. All the rest of them were just nonsense ones. Uh, one of them caught my attention on this engine in particular, which evidently has a problem breaking pistons. According to the General Motors Bolton, I didn't read much further than that. Um, let's, let's, somebody's been here. This spark plug tube is deformed. It's got sharp edges on it. Like, I don't know what somebody would have been doing, but let's look down in there with the bore scope, just see if we see anything obvious. I think, however, well, this is interesting. I was just gonna push that tab back. I was gonna say, I think, however, we would be it would service well, we'll say, to have a known good, to be able to, in case we're questioning anything. Ah, sugar, probably should have pulled cylinder four. That one would have been down at the bottom at the same time. This sucker's probably gonna be at the tippy top. So here's to not thinking. Here's to not using your head, young man. This one's gonna be a top dead center. Oh, that was made a rookie mistake. I don't see any oil on that. Not too bad. So that spark plug's nice and black, but we just did a cold start. Of course, dead misfire on it. Didn't let it warm up. Not surprised. Let me put some NGKs in this bad boy. NGK iridiums. Let's see. This this piston's my top dead center. Oh yeah. She's high up. Okay, let's get our uh, Mr. Wiggles. We'll stick him right in that hole. And let's see what we see. So this is Mr. Wiggles. He's got the wiggly tip. Wee! <laughs> Isn't that thing fun? I just love using this. Okay, quit being chopped. Let's grow up here. Uh, I'll get you guys the model number of this uh, depth stack camera. Here's me looking at you, okay? Uh, we're going to go in the hole with that. This gives us the ability to give it the flickeroo and look back up at the valves, and we should be able to get a good look at the piston. I'm going to attempt to record it here. Okay, it says it's recording up according to the corner up here. It says it's recording. So I should be able to share this with you. Okay, let me see if I can hit the hole here. Ooh, almost in, there we go. Ooh, guide me in. Oh, what's that? So we're looking at the top of the piston right now. That's interesting, The like that horseshoe shape. What the world? And then we've got obvious, obvious liquid. Oil, probably gas. Jump sitting on top of the piston. Wow, lots of scoring on that cylinder wall. Okay. Lots of scoring on the cylinder wall. Now the service bolts in that said that they cracked the piston on the top land uh, did say that there was you know, usually evidence of scoring on the, on the cylinder wall. So here is, you know, good cylinder wall, nice cross hatch. That is some pretty, pretty bad scoring there. Very interesting about this piston though. I don't know what this dimple is in the middle, perhaps because it's GDI. I don't know, we'll have to look at the good one. I'm glad we pulled out the other spark plug. Obviously, lots of carbon buildup and such. But 
a pretty fair amount of, of vertical scoring, particularly right there. Oops, control yourself, man. Yeah, so lots of vertical scoring. Yeah, okay. So that's interesting. Um, Oh, wait, let's look at the, we can look at the valves, not that it's probably very necessary, but we'll get rid of the old flick back here. We'll go all the way down. Okay, now we're looking back up at the valves. I don't see any burn marks in them. Usually a burn mark will cut a big V in there. It is interesting on not that intake valve, but on this one here, the liquid that's there. I don't know if that's oil that just came down the spark plug hole when we took the spark plug out and then just kind of migrated across that uh, valve. That's what I would imagine. So let's straighten this thing back out. There we go. We're back on the piston. Interesting. Let's uh, have a look at our known good cylinder two, because it looks like there's like a step down in the piston there on the side, and then also you know, on that side. Looks like this piston design, but lots and lots of carbon on top of this piston. Obvious scoring in the cylinder wall there. Pretty heavy scoring. So I'm assuming our service bolton applies to this one. Let's crank this engine over a little bit. I'll just keep that recording here. Oops. Let's get our piston indicator tool. Oops. Feels like we're pretty close. All right, we're at rock bottom. Wipe the tip off. Here we go. I feel like dial. Holy diver! That's a long ways to go for a holy diver. Oh, would you look at that? That piston is very uniquely designed. And let's look at our cylinder wall here. Got a nice cross hatch. Oops, let me move my cord here, sorry. Yep, this cylinder has nice cross hatch all the way around. A very clean looking piston, and you can see the unique design of this piston. That's really cool. That's really cool, man. A little bit of a hot spot right there. Must be where a cooling, coolant jacket goes, or is. A little bit of scuffing. But yeah, very uniquely designed piston. That's neat. All right, well, hopefully that gives you guys a little something. That's pretty cool. Let's have a look up at the valves on this one. There's our injector right there. That's where our injector sticks through the cylinder. That's pretty cool, wouldn't you say? They're pointing back down here. There we go. All right. So pretty cool tool. Pretty neat to be able to see the design of that piston. And then really kind of neat to look down in that cylinder that we're working on and be able to see the actual physical damage there that's done. Uh, let's roll, I guess we could just roll that cylinder back to the bottom. 
we could stick a leak down tester in it and chances are we're gonna hear it coming out of the crankcase. In which case, you know, at this point you're, you're putting a motor in it or you're pulling it out and getting it rebuilt. If the cylinder wall is all scuffed up, if the piston is cracked from, uh, probably from pre-ignition would be my assumption, um, then, you know, you're rebuilding the engine or replacing it. I'd leave that up to the customer at that point. So I'm gonna roll her back down and we're gonna get out our leak down tester. So I used uh, Mr. Wiggles, look down inside the hole, make sure we are on the compression stroke. All the valves are closed. I'm going to stick a leak down tester, a differential pressure tester in there. We're gonna apply 100 PSI to it. We're gonna see how much it's going past, whatever it's going past. Crank this baby up. 100 PSI. And we've got about 85% blow by, or I'm sorry, 75% blow by. Oh yeah, <laughs> you hear it, ready? Yeah, you can, you can blow dry your hair with the crankcase. So, so, so buttons on my underwear, not really worth looking at anything. It's what we expected to see. Here, in here, coming out of there. It's gonna be coming out of here. Probably shouldn't take this off, but, oh yeah. Hey, listen to this. Oh, of course, can't hear it now, frickin' Josh. Anyhow, that's it. There's no sense really looking anymore. The, you know, the damage is obvious. Looking down in the cylinder, seeing the scoring. You can blow dry your hair with the air coming out of the crankcase. That's it, it is over. It's finished. Here's the uh, bolt in there I saw that I thought would pertain. Uh, not really a bolt in, it's a PI. So we got PI 1178 Foxtrot. Engine runs rough with malfunction indicator lamp on. Low compression on a cylinder with misfire PO300 set. Came out in the year 2018. And this applies to, oh, uh, looks like, oh, 13 to 18 uh, trains, Equinoxes, Camaros, the Boost, ATSs, CTSs, CT6, Envisions, Regals. But uh, more specifically with the LTG, the 20 Turbo. Um, and it says here, customers make a plain rough idle. The MILF is on. Tech finds a 300 low compression one cylinder. This is caused by a crack in the piston uh, located between the piston compression rings. Tells you to perform a leak down test. Um, tells you how to do that. Wants you to check the spark plug for damage, check the coil connection, check the cylinder condition. Some light vertical marks may be visible on the cylinder wall. In these areas, check that the honing marks are still visible in this marked area. If they are, cylinder surface has not been compromised. And the engine block can be used. Pop in a set of four pistons, some rod bearings, and you'll be on your way. Uh, I don't think that's our case. Our honing marks, I think, have uh, long since left the chat. And then they give you some illustration, tell you to use a tapered ring compressor. And then when installing the turbo outlet gasket, make sure that it is positioned correctly so you don't uh, cover up the gap. So thank you to the engineer who made that hole slightly offset <laughs> so you can actually cover the gap by about two millimeters if the gasket is flipped. Uh, that's it folks, we're done, show's over. Thanks for watching. Oh, come on now, I'm not gonna leave you hanging like that. Uh, but at this point, it is up to the customer. I'm gonna give them the option of having this engine rebuilt or uh, replacing the engine. That's it. I run a shop, that's how I do it, and that's the call we're gonna make. It has excessive blow-by, low compression, obvious misfire. That's it, there's no miracle, no parts required fix for this thing. Uh, it does need to be tore down. That's it. Why don't you guys uh, tear on down to that comment section. Questions, comments, find me on the Insta, Facebook, you know what to do. Just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.